Hello and welcome to the UTV podcast. I'm Carol Jordan, one of UTV's news editors. This week, the biennial UK Space Conference will take place in Northern Ireland for the first time. It brings together academics, industry professionals like astronauts and potential investors. The conference provides a platform for the space sector to exchange ideas and plans, partnerships that encourage development and success in the emerging space age. Today, I'm joined by Robert Hill, who is the head of the Northern Ireland Space Cluster and is one of the driving forces behind bringing the space conference to Belfast. Thank you so much for joining me today, Robert. Um, first of all, can you tell me what is the Northern Ireland Space Cluster? The Northern Ireland Space Cluster is companies currently involved in aerospace and defence and adjacent sectors and both are world class leading research institutes, Queen's University and Ulster University, working together with government uh, to create a space sector here in the region. And if you look historically at Northern Ireland, we are a region of problem solvers. We're innovators, we're entrepreneurs. And people are always amazed, and probably our own listeners here will be amazed, you know, the ejector seat was invented here. Many people may know of Harry Ferguson, invented the first modern tractor. Did you know that the first electric tramway in the world in the 1800s was at the Giants Causeway? And the pneumatic tyre that we all use in our cars and vehicles was invented in Northern Ireland. And if you look back at our scientific heritage, you know, Ernest Walton split the album, uh, split the atom even, uh, we have Professor Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell who discovered pulsars, you know, it's in our heritage. And the absolute temperature scale, Lord Kelvin, came from here. So it is in our genetics, it's in our DNA. And we were often referred to as the Black North, historically. We have an incredible heritage of manufacturing and industry in shipbuilding and of course in aerospace. The first ever commercially uh, signed contract with the uh, Wright brothers is in shorts and it's growing all the time. We employ over 9,000 people in the wider aerospace and defence sectors uh, and it brings in over a billion pounds to the economy. So why not go into space? It is the evolution of our manufacturing. And people often ask when you go into space, you know, what is it about? Now, what are the different components? Well, there's really two, two levels to it. There's the engineering piece. You have to design a spacecraft. You have to design the launcher. I'm sure many people are watching the SpaceX launch uh, at the weekend. You have to test all of that. You've got to get all that equipment into space. Then once it's in space, you have to deploy it. And then those spacecraft send, of course, signals back to the Earth, lots of information and data. And we use that information every day in our lives. Every morning you wake up, every night you go to bed, we use space, whether it be for communications, whether it's in your mobile phone or you're watching satellite TV. Whether it's trying to find your way from A to B and navigate your way around, we use a global positioning satellites, GNSS. And of course, our, even the weather forecasts is a mix of sensors on the ground and space-based sensors. So what do you do with all of that information? So we have a really strong data analytics community, a very strong cyber community here in Northern Ireland. So we're applying all of that knowledge and experience into the space sector. That sounds amazing. Now, of course, this week um, we have uh, the UK Space Conference Indeed, is taking place in Northern Ireland for the first time. Can you tell us a little bit about what that involves? Who's coming? What can we look forward to? And also, you know, what kind of opportunities is that conference likely to present itself with? Well, it's called the UK Space Conference, and indeed it is. It's the first very large UK Space Conference, A, post-Brexit, and B, post-Covid. And that's very important, isn't it? Because, it is very you know, important. with Brexit, we've seen this sort of detachment from the European Space Agency. So this, does this bring a new... Well, no, no, no. Uh, that's point. The European Space Agency, we are still members. Okay. Uh, in fact, we have upped our subscription mm -hmm. in the UK to the European Space Agency. So it's a membership club. Mm -hmm. Canada is a member of the European Space right. Agency. However, you're quite right to point out that Brexit brings opportunities and challenges. And the opportunities here is in Northern Ireland. We are a unique space. In fact, that's our, that's our local tagline for the conference, because we have unfettered access both into the GB and of course into Europe. It's a unique position for anyone looking to invest in the UK or in Europe. So we're really going to be pushing that very, very hard. The conference is a three day conference. We're expecting around 1400 delegates from all around the world. So I said it's the UK Space Conference, 
but it's a global space conference. We have delegates coming from the States, from Europe, as far afield as Japan and Australia. Uh, we're delighted that the European Space Agency's uh, reserve astronaut, John McFall, who's the first ever para-astronaut, will be coming not just to the conference to talk to our companies, but also to our school kids. And it's a very big part of this program, our future skills and the generation of building those young people that can be involved in, in STEM programs. And we're going to be doing an entire program with 650 kids from all over Northern Ireland, learning what does STEM mean, what does space mean for Northern Ireland, and how can they get involved. And Northern Ireland, you know, this is nothing new to us. The Armagh Planetarium has been around since the 1960s. It was the first place in the world to actually project digital onto a dome, which now every planetarium in the world uses. And interactive seating, a bit like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where the, the audience answers the questions, that was invented in Armagh. So we're not new to any of this. It's just we're developing it. And the industry itself has changed, and that's why this conference is so important. If you would have said to me 20 years ago, small companies in Northern Ireland get involved in space, that would have been quite a difficult proposition. These would have been multi-billion pound programs that only countries and entities like NASA and the European Space Agency could be involved in. That has completely changed. Now, the poster boys, I suppose, at the minute, like it or loathe it, are companies like Elon Musk's SpaceX or Jeff Bezos now with Blue Origin. They have totally bucked the trend of what space and commercialization and the democratization of space looks like. People say to me, are we going to Mars? Okay, so it didn't go so well at the weekend if you ever watched the, the spaceship launch, Starship launch, but that is a spacecraft that can take us to other worlds. It's not science fiction, it's science reality. And our companies are getting involved. If you look at programs all around the world involved in space, our companies are involved with them. Do we, can, I, can I just stop you there? Can, you know, do we have the skills here in Northern Ireland to actually Absolutely. aspire to be a real part of this you know, this final frontier, I guess, yeah. you know, to invoke a very bad cliche. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> one, one giant leap, it steps into all of this. Absolutely. I mean, it's engineering challenges. These are engineering challenges that are great for our problem-solving entrepreneurial community. As I say, you've got to get the spacecraft into space. So the first thing you really want to do once you build it is test it. There are spacecraft and elements of spacecraft tested here in Belfast. Uh, at the Thalassolinia Space Facility. This is the Propulsion Competence Centre. So technologies that are added to the satellite, the, the propulsion subsystems, are tested, integrated here in Belfast. They are now in outer space. They left Belfast and they went to outer space. If you've heard of the James Webb Space Telescope, uh, the actual rocket that carried that, there was a camera uh, watching the launch on board that rocket. That was tested at Resonate Testing in Newry where they do vibration and shock and thermal testing. Once you get into space, you have to deploy those mechanisms, or if you land on another planet or the moon, uh, you still need to have springs and shock mechanisms. Springco in Portadown has springs on Mars. Their springs are on their way to Jupiter, on the Jupiter icy uh, moon survey, the, the JUICE mission, and they're going around the sun on solar orbiter. These are, are not massive companies, these are smaller companies doing really incredible work, and that's the difference. The access to space has got cheaper. Uh, the actual technologies have got smaller. You can have satellites now the size of a Rubik's Cube. So instead of having one massive big satellite, you have hundreds, thousands of them. They're called constellations and mega constellations of satellites. That's what Elon Musk is doing with Starlink. All of that has to be tested. It has to be designed, manufactured, tested. Great opportunities for the companies here in Northern Ireland. So that's really clear. But in terms of, I know a lot of people will be listening to this and they were sort of thinking, well, you know, we're finding it hard to heat our homes. We're finding it hard to pay for day-to-day -day living stuff. Um, what is the advantage of actually going into space right now? Why would we, why would we even want to go there? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you know? Really good question. Uh, I know, and I get this all the time, of yeah. course. Uh, but it is a good question. And the fact is, you use space. Every single person, globally now, uses space every day in their lives. And the moment you get up, if you turn on the TV, as I say, if you're watching satellite television, you, that's, you know, the, the, that, that gives it away, what we're doing there. How to get from A to B, your navigation systems, you know, the, the boats in the harbour outside here in Belfast, they all use global positioning satellites. So we're not talking about, like, creating civilizations on distant planets, are we? Well, or? that is part of it, of course. I mean, and the learning that we have, the technology transfer from space is used back, in, back here in Earth. I could give you a myriad of different technologies that we now use every day that have come from space programs. Uh, 
lots, lots of uh, medical programs now are looking to space because in space you can take gravity out of an equation. Things work differently in space than they do back here on Earth. You can actually maybe create new products in space that you can't do here in gravity. So the International Space Station is a laboratory. Going to other planets means there's a lot of challenges that can then be transferred back here to planet Earth. And when you look at the Earth, it's a very precious resource itself. Just looking after our planet, you cannot do that from the ground. You obviously need that holistic approach. You need to see the planet as a whole entity. You can't do that. You have to go into space. And there's a lot of climate change variables that only you can see from space. So it's really, really important for us. Global communications, as I said before as well. And our public sector can be users of space. We're actually piloting projects right now through a program called the Northern Ireland Earth Observation Portal, where government departments are looking at how can they use satellites. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of listeners going, well, it's always cloudy, <laughs> and satellites are in space, so how do you use them? But the fact is you can use what's called synthetic aperture radar, SAR. Radar is pervasive. It works day and night. doesn't matter if it's raining. You can still get information back. And that's news to a lot of people in the public sector, that it doesn't matter if it's day or night or cloudy or rain. You can still use space to inform better public services, create new products, and then our small companies can work with the public sector to create those products, maybe for free here in Northern Ireland, but then exploit that elsewhere. So there's an entire ecosystem that we're developing. And I'm delighted to say that the UK Space Agency last year gave us a million pounds, and that shows confidence in the region. They gave us a million pounds to develop this infrastructure for our engineering companies to get on the ladder, to actually try and test their stuff, with other big space companies and get that relationship, and also for our public sector to learn how to best use space in the governance of the region. So there's an ecosystem growing, there's confidence across the UK, we're part of the UK supply chain, but we're also part of the global supply chain. That's why this conference is so exciting, because as I said, it's not just our colleagues from the UK coming, it's right around the world. They're shining a light on our wee part of the world, and we've got everything that you need to develop your space programs here in Northern Ireland. That does sound really, really exciting. <laughs> Going back to that, what within the industry as a whole are you kind of most excited about? What sort of developments are there, you know, coming down the line that you think, oh yeah, that's a game changer? For, for me, it's data. It's the information and the services. Uh, and that's very important for... Now, let, let's go to the importance and, and the business side of it itself. Being able to manipulate that data and do something meaningful with it for your, for your fellow man or for commercial gain is realistic. Space is just another source of data. You just fuse it, you ingest it with other data sources, and that'll either enhance an, uh, an existing app or an existing product and service, or it can create a new, totally new one. So there's opportunities there, okay? But data itself, how do you gather that data? Do you send it from the satellite back to the ground, collect all the data, and then do something with it? Or do you do it in space? Because, as I said, Elon Musk, mega constellations of satellites, at the minute, I think we're sitting about 3,000 spacecraft in orbit around the Earth now. That's the active, not things that are dead. These are satellites that are active now. In the next 10 years, 20 years, what do you think? How many satellites do you think we'll have in the next 10, 20 years? Oh my goodness, I couldn't even hazard a guess. The, 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 the conservative estimate is 150,000. Maybe upwards of 200,000 satellites up there, all generating information. And the satellites, although they may be getting smaller, they're getting more capable. I mean, you only have to look at, at your mobile phone now compared to what would have been a room full of computer gear. It's, a, you know, it's, it's all within your mobile phone. Same thing's happening in space. It's, it's getting smaller and smaller. The capabilities are getting better and better, which means you're generating more data on board the spacecraft. You still have to send that information back, and that creates bottlenecks. And it doesn't matter, you know, you, there's, there's ways you can do it. You can use laser optics. And there's ways you can increase the bandwidth so you can get more information. But if you've got 200,000 satellites there, all communicating with each other and back to Earth, all generating information, there is that question, do you collect the data on the ground, and, and that's a lot of infrastructure and a lot of funding required to create that infrastructure, or do you do it in space? Do you actually do the, the artificial intelligence, the data collection, the ingestion, and only send back the information that a user needs, not to the infrastructure, but to the phone itself of the actual person that needs it? That's Game changing, absolutely game changing. That's the, what I'm really excited about you know, in the next few years. And there are companies here in Northern Ireland, um, FD Technologies and KX, for example. I mean, they work in fin financial technology in, in the stock markets. And you're probably wondering, why, why is a company that does FinTech getting involved in space? But think of the analogy here. 
they're collecting billions of rows of data from around the world in real time and really looking at for proverbial nail in the haystack, the anomaly, the change. What are we doing in space when we look at the Earth? We're looking for change, we're looking to extract information. It's exactly the same thing and companies like that have great heritage in a, in a very robust sector where you're collecting all that information, it has to be secure, you have to be accurate and you have to provide evidence if anything goes wrong. Exactly the same thing with the space sector. So by applying that uh, knowledge from adjacent sectors, we can apply it to the space sector. So it's not just our engineering companies you know, directly in aerospace and defence or those that are directly involved in data analytics. There's whole sectors here in Northern Ireland that can benefit from getting involved in space and that's really the message we're trying to get across here. That space is for everyone. It's not something we're doing in the future. It's something we're doing right now. We're doing it very well and we're looking to grow that and this conference is a really good time for us to shine a light on our, our unique place in space. Fantastic. And my final question, um, if there's anybody listening, a young, you know, you've spoken about the young people and the need to engage young people um, with STEM, etc. If there is anybody listening to this who thinks, I quite fancy, you know, getting involved in that sector, what would your advice be to a young person who's considering a, a this, career in, in space? This is a really important question also because, you know, a lot of people think, I have to be a rocket scientist to get into space. As, as I've pointed out, you can really be in, in any part of the economy, any part of the, the workflow and be involved in space as either as a developer of a solution or just using space data to, to augment something you're doing already. Or very importantly, you can be an apprentice. I mean, more and more we're looking for apprentices that can actually do some work. For example, you think of soldering and welding. You know, it seems like a very common task. Soldering and welding for space is very different. So we're actually training people up that how do you do space welding and space soldering. It's not just about the academic community. We're very lucky that we have the likes of Queen's and Ulster here, you know, providing that talent pool. But really it's also about those apprenticeships by young people getting involved. So please don't think that I need to get, you know, A stars across everywhere. I would love to see more of that. Of course we do. Um, but the value is also in those people that can actually make things happen. It's that entrepreneurial spirit. Space has changed, as I said. Access to space is easier. Having bright ideas and actually seeing can satellite technologies help you, you know, create that product and service, that's as, as important as creating the satellites and the rocket launchers themselves. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much. Well, that certainly enlightened me as to the final frontier and how broad the idea of working in space can be. Less about alien life and more about potential for us here on Earth. That's all from us for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Until next time, goodbye.